Hi, my name is Paul Sargent and welcome to AP European History. So this year the College Board has decided to divide up the, the curriculum into key concepts and so if your class is following the key concept idea like mine is, then this is really going to help you because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview of each key concept so you get the basic idea of what's happening and try and be able to put it all into some sort of general understanding. Today we're going to take a look at key concept 1.1 which I'm calling Renaissance and Scientific Revolution because that's really what it is. And we can break this down into some major ideas but here's the big picture. Over the course of this concept, the European worldview is going to shift from a medieval worldview which favored religion and religious practice as the center of life and the center of all truth, and then a transition over time through to a period in which truth is going to be analyzed more scientifically through experimentation and things like that in order to try and understand what's real and what's not. Now, one does not necessarily negate the other. Because, because Europeans start being more scientific and trusting science does not mean that they abandon the church altogether. And in fact, church going is still very big in Europe. However, what it does is it undermines the absolute authority of the Catholic Church. Now this key concept is broken up into some very major categories. And those are the ones that I want to go through with you here. First of all, is the idea of the Renaissance, and more specifically, the idea of Renaissance humanism. Now, I have videos on this that you can that, that you can watch, but the overview basic idea is this. During the Renaissance, there becomes a shift in, in ideas that starts to value the individual. If an ism is a belief, humanism is a belief in the potential of human beings. And basically what it says is it says that it's okay to better your life. It's okay to better your society. It's okay to work for personal gain. It's okay to gain knowledge. Those things are not, uh, those things are not inherently bad. Now this is different from the Middle Ages where total obedience to the church and to one's Lord was sort of the rule of the day. And so you're going to have these people who are getting more and more intellectual and their ideas are going to be stimulated by the arrival of new classical texts from the East. Different writers from, Greek and, from, from Greece and Rome who were pagan writers, of course they lived before Jesus Christ was born. but they have ideas which are still valid in the, in the Renaissance mindset. And so those are going to change the way people view not only society, but the individual's part in society. Now that rolls into different forms of humanism, including secular humanism, civic humanism, and even in the North it takes on its own uh, interpretation, which is more biblical. It also translates into the arts. Because art, which had been used basically as a teaching tool for the church during the Middle Ages, is going to transform. Artists are going to try and depict things more naturally. They're going to try and make more realistic representations of the world around them. Now, the money is still coming from the church to commission these works of art, and let's face it, artists have to eat. So, what they start doing is they start painting religious paintings and carving religious carvings and things like that. But by using their, uh, by using observation and by using experimental techniques, especially in the case of Leonardo da Vinci, um, they're going to start trying to depict the human form more realistically. They're going to create backgrounds to religious paintings, which are going to try and depict uh, not only space, but uh, changes in the way things appear as they go farther away, more natural environments. And they're going to try and portray people in these paintings more as individuals and less as idealists or ideal portrayals, which was really the medieval kind of thing. Um, this hits uh, through uh, the early Renaissance in Florence, the High Renaissance, which really is centered in Rome, and of course the Northern Renaissance, which is centered up uh, in the north of Europe. Artists are then going to take those ideas 
and they're going to become a little bit more playful with them. Mannerist artists are going to start elongating their forms, they're going to start playing with the human body a little bit so that it looks right but not quite right in order to try and make points. And then the Baroque period is going to be used to kind of show the glory of the church, the glory of the state, the glory. It's glory. It's like everything. It's big. It's powerful. It's majestic. It's meant to really create an emotion out of you. The ideas of the Renaissance are spread very quickly because of the inventing of the printing press. And the invention of the printing press, or more specifically the invention of moving type by Johann Gutenberg, um, makes it much cheaper and much easier to, to publish and transmit books. Now, if you have more books going around, then you obviously want more readers, and so it encourages the publishing of books in the vernacular languages, those national languages. And as things start getting published in, natural, in national languages, there develops a sense of nationality within people who speak those same languages, and nationality we're going to be talking about all year. Well, now we jump a, a couple hundred years into the scientific revolution and all and the scientific revolution is really all about people who are starting to question reality and starting to question the old ways that reality was interpreted by the Catholic Church it starts off in astronomy which is really the big thing and with the uh, with the ideals of Copernicus who puts forth the idea of a, a heliocentric universe the ideas of Kepler that uh, that planets follow elliptical orbits the observations of Tycho Brahe who meticulously watches the skies and ultimately the ideas of Isaac Newton and universal gravitation we start to see that there is an order to the universe which can be understood and that gets moved out to all kinds of different uh, forms of science so that people are starting to move away from accepted norms which have been around for a long time and are starting to like question and experiment and do things about the movement of blood throughout the body, um, the, they get rid of the ideas of the humors, these, or these chemicals that kind of infuse the body with good or bad things, um, medicine is going to start to improve, all of these things are going to start to improve and ultimately what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with what we call now the scientific method which is really um, developed in two forms, inductive and deductive reasoning. Um, and these two forms kind of say, hey, sometimes we need to take the, 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 the facts and come up with a general theory, and sometimes we need to take a general theory and see if the facts back it up. And working together, that allows us to create something which we can work with and prove scientifically. And so, what you have is you have this movement from a world at the beginning of the Renaissance that takes for granted the teachings of the, Catholic, of the Catholic Church about everything around the world, about how to live your life, about how the world works, and all of that. We move through a period of rediscovery where ancient texts are used to come up with new ideas. Those are disseminated through the new printing press, and we ultimately end up with a scientific community that is trying to prove that things work in an orderly fashion. And if they work orderly, orderly then they can be predicted, which is huge. And those people who follow Newton really follow the idea that God is not an active participant in the world. God created the world, but like a, a clockmaker, that's the great analogy, God sort of created everything and set it going. And then since then, he's kind of taken a back seat. So everything that's out there that functions, functions predictably, but he's not actively taking a part in all of this. So that's your key concept, and you can see the change in the mentality there. So I hope this helps. Please uh, subscribe if you'd like to be notified of new videos. But there's your overview of Key Concept 1.1. And if you're interested, I have lots of videos on my website that go further into depth on lots and lots of these topics. You can also go to my, websites at, my website at www.sargenotes.com, in which I lay out for you not only the key concept itself, but I link to lots of other videos which can help. 
and lots of in handouts and things like that. So there's a lot there. So hopefully this helped. And uh, once again, my name is Paul Sargent. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.